Welcome to this week's SV Links video. Well, here at the lot, we are going to be doing a whole bunch of sanding this week on the hull, removing the excess squeeze out. Right, and uh, boy, not really looking forward to getting into those bunny suits for an entire week, but you do what you have to do to get the boat so that you can sail it around the world, and that's what we're planning on doing. Once uh, we finish up sanding, uh, we're also going to talk about a big decision we made about something to do with uh, the building of the boat. And so we'll get to that in the second half of the video. So let's get to sanding. Well, it's time to take out all the screws so we've been pulling them out of all these spots pull them out, pull them out. <laughs> i like your mustache <laughs> <laughs> time to get them all out and then we're gonna sand this stuff off now down here if you can see this is a really ugly area where we we left a lot of squeeze out at first and there's a lot more because of these uh narrower board so there's a lot more so this is a really an ugly and slow spot to sand but uh i already started on the sanding on this side and you can see that i took this off in about oh i'd say 20 minutes uh 15 minutes maybe for this uh quadrant of the stern and this is one of the more difficult areas where there's um due to the uh, curving there's edges that have to be rounded off and stuff as we go down the hull it's going to actually be easier so uh, we uh, shouldn't have too much trouble with sanding most of this off. It comes off very rapidly, but as you can see right here, it, it takes it right down flat, but it doesn't take the fiberglass off there. So it, we're good. Well, we're moving along. So we started at the stern here and uh, gotten this uh, excess sanded off of here now. Uh, it's uh, somewhat slow going. This is about one day's worth. And uh, we've got the whole hole to about here and that side up to where Brian is over there on the other side. So there he is. He's about to put his uh, bunny suit back on because this is a uh, dusty work. And uh, we've got to get our homemade respirators back on again. Those are working out quite well. And uh, glad we, sorry, glad we built those things. And uh, we are still using our angle grinders but not with a grinder on there uh, we're using these flap discs as you can see they're they're soft and angled so uh, you don't really go down through the material at any kind of serious speed here uh, but they're still a lot faster than just using a regular sander to get this down to the level of the boat here now uh, we did a lot better on this hull in the laying of these out so there's not quite as difficult to get this rounded off as it was and that's just from uh, applying the experience of the first hull when we did the strips on this one we, we laid the strips out just slightly differently it won't make any real difference in the end uh, it just saved us work on here but we figured this that this to sand this entire hull is going to take us a little bit longer than we anticipated and so we're planning now for this entire week of sanding. And so we started yesterday and we'll be going all the way through this coming Saturday on sanding it. And probably Monday and Tuesday of the following week to get this completely sanded. And then we'll need a few days of doing a few patches. They're not as many, but they, there's a spot right here that needs a little patch. There's fewer than there was on the first hole again. Again, because we had more experience, we left the squeeze out and so uh, 
most of this is coming out already fine. So there's just a few spots that we need to patch. But we still, we need a few days for that because we got to patch it, wait for it to, to cure and then sand it again and then check it all. And so I think that it's going to add one more week to the build of this. Now we did really well on how fast we strip planked it. So we're a little bit ahead on that, but we're going to go a little bit further behind with the, uh, the sanding, but it'll all work out in the end. We're still shooting for that seven weeks uh, to do the hole from start to finish. So uh, we'll see how, how that goes. But uh, at this point, we're, we did really well on the strip planking and we're doing a little bit slower on the sanding. But like I say, it works out. So it's the bunny suits for us for the next six, seven days worth of working. So it's a little bit hot uh, wearing these suits, but fortunately the weather has cooled off and we're in the low 80s uh, at this point, like 82 degrees Fahrenheit, this in Celsius. So it's not too bad in the suits. And with the respirator putting airflow onto your face, it keeps you a little bit cool that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick up where I left off up here and get back to work. been doing our best impression of uh, ghosts for Halloween here and we've been in these suits all week that's Monday Tuesday Wednesday and now we're on Friday but the good news is we're gonna get this thing finished today and so uh, we'll be able to get out of these bunny suits for next week and get to some other work on the hulls but uh, one more session of sanding and we're gonna have this done. So oh, as you can see, Brian's brother Dale is here to help today. We'll put him to work. Look at that, you hey, show up and, and we make your hand sand. Damn Boy, I love sanding. I love sanding. <laughs> that's, that's the t-shirts I'm gonna get for I everybody. Was gonna say, I was gonna say. We're, we're getting t-shirts for that on it for sure. I'm gonna try to make sure I don't the spot a little deep. I don't wanna go too deep and make sure they're even with the rest of the yeah, with that big long board, you don't have to worry too much about it because it's, yeah. it shouldn't it shouldn't sand in, yeah. Yeah. you know. So uh, if you just go flat with that thing, it'll just take the highs off. And you know, there's I'm probably gonna... still spots we're gonna need to load. Now this part here, I'm not that concerned about because we have to sand this off. Yeah. While he's working on sanding the porthole here, Brian's still over here working on the very bow now as we're almost done getting the, the majority of the out, squeeze out off. So it's definitely gonna happen today. So uh, I've got from where my sander is up on top there. So I've got a little bit more than he has to go, but we're still gonna get it all done today. So the verdict on leaving the squeeze out is where we left out too much at the beginning when we were first doing it up here, 
for example. We should have taken some more of this down, but still left some. Later, we got wiser about that and uh, left some, but not quite as much, so it takes a little less sanding. But regardless of that, either one of them is achieving the goal we want, which is these seams here are much cleaner than they were the first time. It's gonna take a lot less work now to get this uh, right. That doesn't mean there isn't work, it just means it's gonna be a lot less uh, putting epoxy on and sanding it uh, on there. So hopefully we'll get that in maybe a couple rounds of that. All right, so we have finished the initial knocking the big quantity of squeeze out off. We're gonna vacuum up as much of this dust as we can. Then we'll check it for a little bit of uh, additional sanding, probably get out the flexi sander a little bit. Take a look now, but our snow globe has turned into a boat haul again. So, uh, it came out very nice. I'm happy with it. The number of fixes that we're gonna have to do are maybe 10% of what we did on the other hull. This is, most of this is beautiful. So we don't have to do anything to any of that. Just a few spots. Of course, all the holes that we drilled to hold the planks in. But um, there's only a few little spots, like right there's one. But really, overall, this is really nice. It's just amazing that big, huge flat panel is now this nicely curved bottom portion of our hull, the canoe. So uh, tomorrow is Saturday, and tomorrow we're going to clean this up with some alcohol. And um, actually, before we do that, we're going to feel over everywhere, make sure there's nowhere else we don't have to do just a little bit of extra sanding. Uh, and we'll get the flexi sander out for some of the curved parts. But once we get that uh, sort of spot checking sanding done, we'll um, wipe it down with alcohol and then uh, start patching the holes and patching the few little holes. Hey, everybody. As you can see, we're here at the lot. And I've come with the Admiral because we have made a decision, something we're going to change and actually changes something we said we're going to do into something else new. And so we thought we'd come out here and talk a little bit about why we changed our mind on this. And what we're talking about here are these big holes you see sitting here. And what we're planning on doing now, to cut to the chase, <laughs> is reversing them all the way around so that the bows are back there and the sterns are up front here. This is something that we considered a while back, but it's also something some of our viewers commented on in an earlier video, which I'll link up here. But we'll read their comments right now. So one of our viewers uh, is questioning our comment about having access to install the motors. Why not rotate the whole yacht on the build site so that the cockpit is facing the entrance to the lot? Right, and then another one says, why don't you turn the build around? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not wrong. That was a good option. And at the time that they wrote these comments, I had an answer for them. And that answer was that this lot, as you can see, is not 50 feet wide between that shipping container and the fence over there. It's about maybe 30 feet or 35, somewhere in there. That's nowhere near enough to spin these hulls around. So that was one of the reasons. So I mentioned that we would have to bring a crane in, lift them up and turn them around, how expensive that would be and all that stuff. And so I said, basically, you know, we don't want to do that. Besides, we want the option to bring in a truck. And so those were the answer we gave to them. So now why are we changing our mind about reversing these hulls? Well, let's uh, take a look at that and explain to you our reason for that. And uh, we have changed our minds. The reason for that is we just don't think we can get a flatbed backed up in here to haul the boat out. Uh, it's, it's just too tight to make the turn. So we're going to use a crane instead. Right, so I mapped this out originally so that I did a 3D version of the yard and the boat and everything. And I mapped it out and you could make this turn. You could do it, but it would be incredibly mm -hmm. tight and at the time that shipping container wasn't where it is and it was kind of swing out a little bit there was just a lot of reasons and it's possible that we could still make that turn 
It's just, it's so incredibly tight and we just don't want to risk banging the boat into the shipping containers or the poles on the side or uh, the truck not having enough room and just turning into a whole fiasco. And so we're going to spend the money to bring in a crane and the crane can just lift the boat up in the air, turn it over and set it onto that flatbed truck out in the alley. And so that's sort of the, the reason now that we're going to do that. So now let's talk about the benefits of rotating these two holes around since it's going to take a lot of work because we're going to have to go through some shenanigans to get this done, which we'll explain <laughs> in a moment. So we're not going to bring a crane in to do it, like I mentioned before, because that is too expensive. And so we figured out another way to do it for just some effort, but no money. And one of the benefits is easier access to the interior from the container doors. Right. We have our two containers, one with all the small pieces that are be going inside the boat, and those are all going to have to get lifted up into the boat. And then there's some pieces in this one as well. But both of these doors open up right over here. And so if we can just walk right around and go up a stairway right here, it's just a much shorter than going down the center of this thing all the way to the end of the boat. Also, there's just more space behind here where we can take some of these larger ones that come out of the orange container and walk them out and get them up on top of there where if we were back there, we'd be up against the, the fence and it would just be possible problems. So uh, we need, I don't say we need, but it's gonna be much nicer yeah. to have the end over here where it's just easier to work with. Another benefit is that the bulkheads can be placed earlier in the order they're supposed to be because we don't have to take the heavy diesel engine down the center. Right, and those major bulkheads span across these two yeah. holes all the way down here. And we were gonna have to try to do the engine so much earlier and that's not really the way it's supposed to be done in the plan. So now by reversing these around, we can put those major bulkheads in and uh, at worst, we have to leave the last one out while we, before we put the engine in. But that's going to be a lot nicer. So uh, that's a big benefit. And then the next one, wind's blowing our notes along. <laughs> oh, I, um, the next one is it's easier for us to lift the cabin top yeah. onto the boat. And the reason for that is simply that the cabin top is going to be built out here in this open space you see out there, beyond the cameras. And... Uh, when it's done, we're going to have to bring in a telescoping forklift and lift it up, turn it, and drive it in and set it down. Well, the problem with it when it was the other way around is simply that there's a longer distance from the bow to the front of the salon than there is from the stern where the, the top of the cabin cup is all the way to the stern. So it's just a shorter distance that the telescoping lift has to bring it up and set it down. So that's just going to make lowering that cabin top on there just a bit easier to do uh, with it reversed around. So that was just another benefit of that. Also, it's going to be easier for us to work on the rudders and the prop shafts because they're going to be right down here. So when we're working on those kick up rudders and the shafts, it's going to be right in front of us. Right. And again, not constrained by the space of that fence back there, like when we're putting that uh, shaft up in there and we have to insert it up in there, there's going to be more space to work. So it's just a big, another big benefit of it. Okay, Phil, how are we going to accomplish this reversing? Yeah, since we're not bringing that big crane in I talked about in those comments. Well, we have a very small flatbed trailer. And what I realized is that we can take the forklift like we did on the other hole, and you can watch that in this video, and lift this hull up into the air, take out all of this structure underneath this holding it currently, all these uh, supports and forms and the wood platform, get all of that out of here. They'll just sit up there while we do that. And then we'll roll my small flatbed trailer in right to the center of the canoe, and then the forklift will lower down the canoe onto that flatbed trailer. And that puts a pivot point on two wheels right in the center of the hull. So at that point, We'll just use human power and we're just going to walk it out, rolling it on that uh, trailer with some people at the front, people at the stern there, and we're going to roll it all the way out and we'll remove all those gates and we're going to take it out and the cars and the trucks out there will be gone mm -hmm. and we'll take it out to the street. So we're going to come out here, 
make this turn and take the hull onto this road. Then we're gonna back it up all the way over here, up to that fence, turn it round, and so now the bow will be coming in and we'll take the bow in and bring it back in on the trailer again. These tables will all be gone. And uh, roll it back in again. Now it'll be reversed, but still upside down. <laughs> At that point, we're going to use the forklift and human power to rotate it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in slings and there's a winch amount onto that forklift we have now. He added it just for us. Uh, thank you, Brian. And he's gonna help with the winch to get it rotating, but we're also gonna be just using human power to help lift and, and, and inch it, it around inside the slings until we get it around. And then he'll just set that down into the forms that will stick down here, the uh, cradles, I should say. And once that's done, out he goes. We take and do the same thing over here. He just lifts this one. We take the trailer in, off it goes out into the street, does its three point turn, back in again, back up again with the slings, human power and winch. We rotate it around, set it down. So it's gonna be a little bit crazy, I, I admit. And uh, you know, um, it's perfectly doable though. So uh, that's our, our plan uh, and we'll see. Of course, we'll show you all this for real <laughs> yeah. when we do the video, but we want to kind of give you an idea of what we were thinking here because I already own the trailer and my friend already has the Bobcat with the forklift and the winch. Mm -hmm. And so we have all the equipment, so that doesn't really cost us anything. And we can do all of this. We're already going to have to bring the forklift in to rotate these, these hulls anyway. anyway. So we'll just also that day do our three point turns with them out of the lot and back in again. So a little bit more work, a little bit more excitement, but we can do it. All right, so that's what we plan to do. So when is this going to take place? Yes. All right, well, it's gonna happen after we put, obviously this hole needs to get fared and we're gonna start doing that uh, very soon. So uh, yeah. next, a week from, I don't know what day this is, somewhere in the next uh, 10, 15 days, yeah. uh, we're going to be putting the basalt onto this hull. And then immediately after that, we start the fairing. And as soon as that fairing is done, and that should go faster, uh, this hull's in better shape than the previous one was to start with. So a lot fewer rounds. And also, frankly, we're just better at it now. So that should go faster. And once that's on, we're going to be putting uh, barrier coat paint on both canoes. And then we're gonna copper coat both of them. And once the copper coat's on and the berry coat's on, these hulls are ready to be flipped over and then we'll schedule our day for the Bobcat to come out and our three point turns. So <laughs> that's our plan on that. So that's the story and why we changed our mind because we figured out a way to do it economically. And that was really, not just economically, but also um, physically how to do it. And that was the sort of the stopping point about why we weren't doing it before. And then the fact that, just to, to reiterate on that, that we have made the decision that we're bringing a crane in to move the, the finished boat onto the flatbed. And so once we made that decision, then it, all of the, the better reasons for having it reversed around were there because the only reason it had it this way to begin with was, was for that flatbed because everything else is better to build it the other way around. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, well, from here on, and that should bring us to the end of this particular video. But we'd like to yes. thank our thank uh, patrons. Uh, we really appreciate them. And there is a, another patron exclusive video coming out uh, that we're going to release at the same time that we release this video. So if you're a patron of the special crew and above level, go ahead and check for that. And if you're not and uh, you have the means, then by all means, uh, uh, become one of our patrons and that will help us out spectacularly and of course you'll get to see all of the various uh, exclusive videos. Uh, but also thank you all for just watching this video. We do appreciate you uh, and your time and sharing a little bit of your day with us. So and thanks. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Right and uh, next week you're going to see more work mm -hmm. on the starboard hull. Yep. So we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.